Hi guys, this is Mike, and in this video we're going to be looking at my favorite keyboard shortcuts within Logos Bible software. In other words, I'm going to call this my top 10 keyboard shortcuts for Logos Bible software. So sit tight, let's go ahead and dive right in. Before we dive into my top 10 list of keyboard shortcuts in Logos, I just want to show you a couple of really great places where you can find near exhaustive lists of the keyboard shortcuts available within Logos Bible software. The first is available internally within Logos in the help file. So if you go over to the question mark icon in the top right hand corner and select Logos Bible software help, there are two articles within this if we look at the table of contents in the advanced section. The uh, first section is keyboard shortcuts for Mac, and the second section is keyboard shortcuts for Windows. So in both of those sections within the Logos Help, you're going to find a list of keyboard shortcuts. If that's not good enough for you and you don't want to look within Logos, you can also go to the user edited wiki. Uh, so if you go to the question mark again and look at view online user edited wiki, you can find two pages. They're called Logos for keyboard shortcuts for Mac and Logos for keyboard shortcuts for Windows. So those are two great places to find these keyboard shortcuts available within Logos Bible software. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into these. So the first one, or not my number one keyboard shortcut, and these are in no particular order, this is just um, a list of 10, is the Show Library keyboard shortcut. So if you're using the Mac, that is Command-L, and that will launch your library in a floating window. If you're on a Windows machine, that's Control L. Keyboard shortcut number two that you should be aware of is the ability to navigate to one of your bookmarks. So for instance, if you have the Favorites tool open, you may not have known this was available, but you have a bookmarks section down here in the bottom left hand corner. So if I have the ESV open and I want to uh, use the ESV as one of my bookmarked places or I want to bookmark my spot in the ESV, I can simply drag that down and set it into one of these bookmarks and now I have John 3.16 from the ESV set as a bookmark as my bookmark one. Now if I want to retrieve that bookmark uh, with just using a simple keyboard shortcut, I can do that on the Mac by pressing Command-1 and that will launch my bookmark directly to its spot. Now each of those nine bookmarks is tied to Command plus the number. So if it was bookmark 2, it would be Command-2. Now this works on Windows in a very similar fashion, only instead of Command, it's Control-1 through 9 to go directly to a bookmark. Keyboard shortcut number three that you should be aware of is the ability to enter what's called drawing mode on both Windows and Mac. So for instance, if I have my ESV open and I want to actually, and I'm, I'm presenting this, so I'm gonna have it be full screen in a classroom setting or some other setting where I wanna present, and I wanna enter and mark up things on the text itself, I can enter something called drawing mode. In the Mac, it's going to be Command F8. And for most of you, you're probably going to have to hold down the function key in order to use one of the function buttons. So it's going to be the function key, Command F8, and that enters into something called drawing mode, which enables you to just make highlights on your text or within logos. Uh, and you can use the scroll wheel to change the color of your highlighter. And this just enables a drawing mode. And you may not have known you could do that. On the Windows side, it's just F8. So you hit F8 and then it enters your drawing mode. Uh, it also, you can clear your drawing by hitting that same keyboard shortcut. Keyboard shortcut number four is the ability to look at a quick comparison or a quick text comparison of the active verse or selected text. So if we have our ESV open and I'm in John 3.16 and I want to see a quick text comparison of some of the translations in my library, the keyboard shortcut for that is F7. In Mac, it's most likely going to be function F7. So if that's your active verse, hit function F7, and you're going to get a pop-up text comparison. If you click on that, it's going to launch the text comparison tool to that exact verse. Now, if you're on Windows, same keyboard shortcut. It's F7. Keyboard shortcut number five that you should be aware of is using the left and right arrow keys to navigate to parallel resources in a panel. 
So once again, if we have our ESV open, notice that we have our parallel resource set here of all of our top English or top Bible versions, and these have been prioritized by us in our library. If this is our active panel, we can hit the right arrow key to move to the next resource or next book in that parallel resource. Uh, and we can continue to hit right to move through. We can hit the left arrow key to move back to other parallel resources in that set. In Windows, it's the same as on Mac. It's the right and left arrow keys within the active panel. Keyboard shortcut number six that you should be aware of is the ability to open a panel in a floating window. So once again, have our ESV down here and we wanna open this in a floating window without right clicking or using our mouse. Uh, you can actually on the Mac hold down Option, Command F, and that will open that resource in a floating window. On the Windows side, instead of Option Command F, it's Control F11. So Control plus F11 will open your panel in a floating window. And in case you're wondering how to, to redock it, you can right click and dock this tab, or on a Mac, you can hold down the Shift key, Option Command F, and that will redock it. On the Windows side, it's Shift Control F11, and that will dock your panel back into your layout. Keyboard shortcut number seven that you should be aware of is the ability to focus or go to the command box without having to click in it. So if you're using a Mac, it's going to be Option Command L, and that will take your focus, your command bar. So now you can type in, let's say I wanna open the ESV, and you can just jump right into it from there. And if you're using a Windows, it's Alt plus D, the D key, so Alt D, and that will focus the command box. So once again, Option Command L on the Mac, go straight to the uh, command box, and then from there you can type in any command. I'll open the King James Bible this time. Keyboard shortcut number eight is the ability to close all panels. So most of you probably have a close all button up here in your shortcuts bar, and you may prefer to use that. But if you like to use keyboard shortcuts, you can just skip using the button. So let's say I've got a couple of resources open here, and I want to close all of these using a keyboard shortcut. Well, on the Mac, it's Option Command W, and that closes all. If you're using Windows, the command is Control Shift W, and that will close all panels. Keyboard shortcut number nine, the ability to show hide the inline search. So if I have my ESV open and I wanna do an inline search of the ESV, I can click this little magnifying glass in the toolbar, or I can use a keyboard shortcut, and on the Mac, that's gonna be Shift Command F, and that will open the inline search where I can run an inline search. And if you're using a Windows machine, it's gonna be Control Shift F to hide and show the inline search. And last but certainly not least, our keyboard shortcut number 10 of my favorite 10 keyboard shortcuts is the ability to show and hide the home page. So to do this on the Mac, it's Shift Command H, and that will show the home page. That same keyboard shortcut also hides the home page. And if you're using a Windows machine, it's going to be Alt plus H, and that will hide and show the home page. So I hope that you enjoyed this list of my favorite 10 keyboard shortcuts. Maybe there's one in here that you weren't aware of that you wanna use, and perhaps you just wanna do it the old fashioned way. Whatever your case is, I hope that you enjoyed this. If you did, make sure that you give me a thumbs up down below, and if you wanna see other videos that are like this, give me a subscribe by clicking the button here. Something I also would challenge you to consider is to support me on Patreon. By becoming one of my patrons, you can continue to support me in creating more of these free videos, as well as some other perks like uh, the ability to interact with me in live webinars, as well as one-on-one -on -one training sessions. You can find a link to support me on Patreon here, or you can click the link down in the description below. As always, enjoy mining the depths of the scriptures using Logos Bible software. Until next time.